<laughs> Can you uh, give Carol Middleton and Bonnie Kick a round of applause? For the work? I'm Pastor Mike Harris, and uh, I'm going to be sharing in your time today, and so thankful for you to come. Uh, I've decided that that must be the back row back there, and uh, this is the front row, just giving you guys a hard time. I'm glad uh, we all have name tags that makes me feel better, because I certainly don't know everyone today. Let me, let me just e express to you from the family, today is going to be a celebration. This is a celebration of life. And I don't know what you're used to in regards to a memorial service, but I can tell you, from my standpoint, this is going to be a good time because uh, we know who we know and we know Marquita knew who she knew. Amen. Amen. And so uh, you can get rowdy if you want with me, if you want to, to uh, you can say, you know, see, there we go. That was a, that was a okay, you can do that. And uh, if any of you have a, you know, just an amen uh, along the way, I would like to do so. And uh, it wasn't really that good. Welcome. Just real quickly, uh, we do have food that we're going to be uh, partaking of, fellowshipping uh, afterwards. And uh, I'll just remind you at this point to, uh, if you didn't sign the register, guest register, it will be there for you. And appreciate it if you would do that. And uh, I'll be saying a prayer over the uh, blessing of the food. And thank you for bringing the food. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Ray, Diana for a wonderful place and the venue to enjoy this Memorial Day service. So if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads, I'm going to open with prayer and then we'll have a, another song from Sister Carol and Sister Bob. Father, it's uh, good and pleasant for our brothers and sisters to dwell together. Lord, I thank you that we have this day set aside, a beautiful day in fact, a day that started out a little contrary and and uh, God, we're used to that. We live in Oklahoma, so we know how that is. But thank you that we have a life to celebrate today. A life well lived. A life that touched every one of us here in some measure or another. And God, we're just going to celebrate the promises that we know are true and amen. We're going to celebrate the fact that we know that our friend, our family member, Marquita, is with you in your presence. And God, we are going to celebrate that together today in your precious name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 And I want to just share one quick scripture and ask the ladies to come and share again. It's found in Psalms, the 16th chapter, and it says this, Thou wilt show me the path of life in the presence of fullness of joy. On thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And we're going to talk about that fullness of joy here in a few moments. Thank you. 
How many knew how old Marquita was? No way. Okay, how many knew how old she was before you read that on the screen? <laughs> oh. How did that work? I never got that from my grandma. How old she was? Yeah. I knew she was three months older than me. Well, see, that's, that was the ticket right there. <laughs> that was the ticket. I found out early on I had something about that, but uh, anyway, I, I just got to tell you, I enjoyed being my kids' pastor. Enjoyed being a friend. Uh, I enjoyed the few moments that I got to spend with her before she passed over and crossed over to the other side. And uh, this obituary we are going to share doesn't at all tell the entire story. They never can. But Marquita May Carter was born on October 4, 1936, to Raymond and Virgil May Carter in Keystone, Oklahoma. She was the second of three siblings born after her brother Herbert and before her brother David. The family lived in the Cleveland, Oklahoma area, also Solomon, Arizona, and Weston, Missouri. Marquita moved to Tulsa in her early 20s and shared an apartment with her good friend, Maxine Crook Mathis. Her career of over 50 years in the mortgage and banking industry took her to Houston, Texas in the late 1970s before moving back here to Tulsa in 1991. She cared for her parents until their passing of her father in 1999. Marquita was cherished and loved by all who knew her. She served the church all of her life and was a faithful servant to God and his children. Marquita was one of those you would always find uh, visiting if you were in the hospital. If you were sick, that's you would find Marquita. I passed her often coming and going, and uh, that was uh, that was her ministry. That's what that's what she did. She didn't want anybody left alone while they were in a in a condition that they couldn't be up and about. That was her deal. She didn't want anyone being left alone. And, the Lord's given me a thought about that in the scripture that I will share here in a few moments. And uh, Aunt Marquita, this is coming from Henry. Aunt Marquita was very special to her nephew, Cliff Carter, and her nieces, Kim Carter, Denise Easton, and Cindy Good. Are all you here? This, would you just cross the door? Okay, that yeah, Very good. She had two great nieces. Clara and Kelsey, four great nephews, Joshua, Christopher, Caleb, and Mitchell, two great, great nieces, Peyton and Kinsley, and one great, great nephew, Lincoln. On November 25, 2021, and I've always said, what a wonderful day to cross over. Now y'all, y'all are getting me this this afternoon. Or, uh, uh, I can tell we're gonna we're gonna struggle here with it a little bit. Everybody remember celebration of life. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, listen, if we know what we know and we know who we know, this is a celebration of life. This is no time to this is no time to sorrow and grieve. I think we probably have already had those times doesn't mean that there's not going to be more times to come from that. But i got to tell you, if I, I really do believe in a place called heaven. I really do believe in a resurrection. I really do believe that Martina is walking on the street of gold. I really believe that she has no worries that she ever had before. And so because of that, i got to tell you, I'm enjoying the fact that I can celebrate her life that was here, but not only here, that was just a vapor, vapor, vapor of time. Yes. James says that it's just there for a little bit and then it vanishes away. And she's living it up like she's never lived it up for all of eternity. So on November 25th, 2021, Marquita went home to be with her Lord. And she was reunited with family and friends forever. Yes. No more goodbyes. No more see you later. Of all those that had gone before her. She was preceded in death by her parents, Raymond and Virgil May Carter, and her brothers, Herbert Carter and David Carter. <coughs> if you're wondering 
if you was reading your obituary and you was wondering where all that other stuff come, I have a different one than you do. So. <laughs> what a day that will be, ladies. Help us out again. And listen, if you know these songs, they're not gonna they're not gonna feel hurt at all if they hear you backing them up in the, in the back. Yes. salvation. 
He's the first fruits, in fact, the word says, of our salvation because he resurrected from the dead. That's what we celebrated last Sunday. How does that all apply to our time here with Marquita and the life that she lived? Well, she lived a life, all of you know Marquita, you knew who she was and what she was about. She absolutely believed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. She absolutely was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. She was not ashamed of it at all. Her faith stuck out everywhere she went. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Marquita was one that was, she was kind of like Paul. She was caught between, do I go or do I stay? There was a long time there that she was like, what do I do here? Do I, do I continue to stay and hang on? And, and I, I felt that from her many times. She was like, I just, I just, I just want to stay around. And she did. She stayed around for, for, for quite a while. But she knew what she knew. And what she knew was what Peter talked about. This scripture in Isaiah prophesied about was that Jesus rose from the dead because He was the first one to take care of the sting of death and to swallow up the grave in a victorious triumph. Yeah. So what He did was He took all of our worry, all of our pain, and can I tell you, He took away the fear. Amen. He should have taken away the fear if we really believe that in what happens after we die. I want to tell you what happens to all of us who die in Christ Jesus. The moment we stop breathing on this side, we are heralded into the presence of the Lord. And that's what Peter was talking about. So well, let me just share this with you. I, I don't, it's John, the 14th chapter, it's one of my most favorite passages in the Gospels, especially because of what was transpiring. And we have Simon Peter saying, you know, Lord, I'll just die for you. There's no way. I'll die for you. And Jesus is saying, yeah, well, let me just tell you, Peter, you're going to deny you even knew me. Three times even before the rooster crows. But, but don't let your heart be troubled. He says, here's what you've got to know. I'm going back to where I belong. But don't let your heart be troubled. And all of you who are listening to me today, listen, I look forward to, and the more I see happening in our world, and more I get from the 10 Spies Network and everything else that's going on in our world, I understand that I'm ready to shoot out of you. And I can tell you this, I'm looking forward to spending an eternity with Marquita. But, if you don't get anything else out of what I say, this is the part that I want you to really catch hold of. In that chapter 14, Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. A lot of people believe in God. But do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus is your Savior? Yes. That He did, in fact, pay your penalty and mine. He paid for my sins. He didn't just die on the cross for me. He died as me. Yes. He took all of mine and all of yours on Himself. And He went to the grave. But praise be to God, He rose again the third day just like He said He would. Amen. And He did that for Marquita. She knew He did that for her. And He did it for you. And He did it for me. But here's the point I want you to get out of this little time together in my thoughts with you. He says, in my Father's house are many mansions, many living spaces, many, many places to dwell. If it weren't so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Specifically. I go to prepare a place specifically for Marquita. I don't know. Her room may not have any calendars in it. <laughs> now, y'all, 
Y'all good with me just being me, aren't you? No, yeah. yeah. I take that as a yes, all right? Listen. Jesus knew what, who He was talking to. He said this, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. He's not going to send an entourage. He's not going to send a party to say, hey, go and get them for me. He's going to come back Himself. Now that's a big deal. That's a big deal in my books. That the God of the universe, the Creator of all that we see, the One that spoke this world into existence, cares enough about me that He says, and when I go back, I'm going back to get you because I've been preparing a place for you. Now this is not fairy tale stuff. This is not fantasy stuff. This is, I told you so in the Word of God and you can trust it, you can believe it. Amen. I know without a doubt Marquita believed this with all of her heart. Amen. She believed it with all of her heart. In fact, I, wasn't, I, I, I had forgotten until just this moment. You all didn't know it. There's no way for you to know it. But in the last week that Marquita was here with us, as I went to visit her over there off of 71st Street, I didn't know if she knew I was there or not. She wasn't making any kind of ways to know that I would know that she knew I was there. But I sang several songs, and one of them was, What a Day That Will Be. I sang that to her, just me and her in the room, I don't know if I was being off key or what, but one of the one of the nurses came running down there. She said, "Well, I just I heard somebody singing," and I said, "Well, I'll take that as a good thing." She said, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah." I just I just wanted to make sure. But we sang, "What a day that will be." So I don't know who ultimately selected that, but I can tell you who ultimately selected that song, and it wasn't any of us. It was God on her behalf. So here's what I'm going to leave you with. He says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Don't miss this part. This is a passage that we hear often in a memorial service. I've preached it often. But I can tell you, never have I emphasized it like I'm emphasizing it today through the anointing of the Spirit of God on me right now to tell you this. He says that where I am, where I am, there you may be also. So don't get all hyped up about even the glories of the heaven, even a street paved with pure gold, even with all the splendor of heaven. But remember one thing about heaven. Heaven is about where Jesus is. Amen. And while we're going to have a wonderful time reuniting with all of those who have gone on before us, the very one that matters the very most and that wants to spend all of eternity with every last one of you, is Jesus. And I hope and pray you have made it those provisions to spend all of eternity with Him. I want to close with prayer. Father, I thank You for everyone that has gathered together on behalf of Marquita. Lord, they're here because Lord, none of us are here because we have to be. We're here because we want to be on her behalf because we loved her. We cherished her life. We appreciated the fact that she made an impact on us. Countless people, Lord, that even are unable to be here today told me over and over, Father, of how much they appreciated Marquita coming and sitting beside them in their darkest days. Thank You, Lord, for that. Thank You for the life that she lived. 
And thank you, Lord, that you welcomed her. You had her, not only her seat saved, but you had her mansion prepared. I believe the welcoming committee was anxious to see her. And I believe, Lord, that when she walked through those gates, I believe everybody applauded and said, we've been waiting for you. Hallelujah. And God, every one of us had that same promise that you gave in John 14 that you've gone to prepare a place for each one of us. So God, we sincerely look forward to that day. Would you just bless the people today? Would you just bless them, I pray? And God, as we partake of fellowship and food, Lord, I pray that you just help us to love on one another, enjoy each other's presence as we feel your presence here. Bless this food. Bless it to the nourishment of each one of our bodies. Lord, we thank you that the hands are prepared. We thank you that they, they put hand sanitizer here for us. They put gloves here for us. God, they're taking care of us. They've done all of those uh, good things for us. And God, I just thank you that we can take this time on Marquita's behalf and celebrate life that is worth living. In Christ's name we pray. Everybody said? Amen. 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 Does anybody have anything that you would like to share before we... Uh, I've blessed the food, so we're, we're good with that. We're going to have a video in just a moment that we're going to show. Before we do, I, wanna, I wanted to just to make sure. What we're going to do is show the video. While the video is playing, then we'll be able to um, have the final preparation for the food before we start. And I'm guessing the line is down on this end. And can you all guess why it's at this end? Because that's where I'm standing. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. I see the plates down there. That's why I said uh, that's where they're at. So is that right, kid? Everything starts down here. And you can double line it. You can go on both sides. Is that right? No. Oh, just that side. Okay. Just that side? All right. So you all just go on that side. I see. Yeah, you don't want to be coming on this side. So, man. Man. Good. Anybody else? All right. Well, we're going to start the video. So if you want to pay attention, put your uh, attention to the screen, and then uh, we'll prepare the food, and then we'll start after that. Thanks again, once again. Thank you for being here today on Marquita's Behalf. Yeah. Uh -huh. 